what's going on everybody today i'm going to show you one of my all-time favorite materials to use on a laser cutter and that is acrylic mirror acrylic mirror is super rad it comes in a ton of different colors uh, and it's a great way to turn an ordinary project into something super extraordinary um, in this video i'm going to show you just the basics on how to engrave it ways to cut it and some different ideas to get you started uh, on working on your own projects So let's go ahead and get the material loaded. As you can tell, acrylic mirror does have a shiny side to it, and you don't want to really engrave on that side. So let's make sure we load the material with the back side facing up. So now that we have the material set up with the back side facing up, let's go ahead and run a small file. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use an old logo of mine and make a keychain. The way to design this is the same as any other material. Um, you know, you want to have your engrave layer and then your cut layer second. Um, the main difference is, is since we loaded that material with the backside facing up, it's actually, we're going to, it's going to be reverse engraving. So what we want to do to counterbalance that is we're going to flip this whole design. So that way, when you look at it from the front side, it looks normal. As far as the power settings go, it doesn't really take a lot to remove that mirror portion off. Um, I'm going to set mine to 150 millimeters a second at 20% power and then my cut line is going to be 12 millimeters a second at 40% power and that's at a 55 watt machine. So let's go ahead and run this file and, uh, and see how it turns out. So now that it's all done, let's take a look at it here. You'll notice after it's done engraving, there's kind of a white residue that's on the backside of it. After it engraves, especially with the air assist, it just likes to push out um, some of that material and, and kind of create this like weird sediment. So uh, let's take it to a sink. I use a dedicated toothbrush here and get all those bristles on the inside. Um, it does a really good job at removing that white powder. Um, and it really cleans up the inside of that acrylic too. So it's a little more translucent of an engraving once you uh, finish cleaning that out you'll see that it's um, all removed all that white powder is gone um, let's dry it off here and then we're going to remove that protective film that comes with the acrylic mirror and uh, and take a look and, and make sure everything looks clean so here we have it um, super highly reflective surface this acrylic mirror just looks amazing with a clean design so this next part is actually a little fun here. Now acrylic mirror is a very binary material. It's either acrylic mirror or you're engraving that portion off. So you don't immediately think that you could do a grayscale image on it, but you actually can if you use the right settings. Um, here I have a picture of my dog loaded up. This is Archie. Um, I'm gonna show you how to kind of give you that look of a grayscale image. Um, while using the halftone settings here in Lightburn. So go ahead and set up your file, uh, your gradient file, just like you did the last one. Uh, we're gonna make sure that we flip the image here again. Um, but since it's an image file rather than a vector file, um, we're gonna change some settings around here. So let's go ahead and select halftone. Once you have halftone set up, you can mess around with some other settings. Um, here we have like the cells per inch. You could try different settings and Lightburn gives you a pretty good preview of what it looks like, um, as well as the scan angle. I like to leave it at about 150 cells per inch. And then I'll just use the recommended 22.5 scan angle for that. So once again, just double check, uh, make sure your image file is flipped. You wanna make sure that it looks the right way from the front side. Um, and then just arrange your layers so that way your image engraving comes first, uh, followed by your vector cut. Um, so let's see what it looks like. Now that the engraving is done, let's go ahead and take a look. You'll see it does have the same white residue. So what we're going to do here is uh, just take a quick look, but let's go ahead and clean this off like you did the last time and then um, see what it looks like. So now that you have it all cleaned up, uh, you can see how the halftone um, really gave it a nice grayscale kind of look. 
Um, it's still a little translucent, yeah, so I'm gonna show you a method that I use to give it a little bit more of a darker, clean and crisp contrast to it. So the technique that I use to give it great contrast here is pull out a can of black spray paint and what we're gonna do is fill in all those engraved parts that you did uh, with black paint. Um, essentially, you know, all those engraved parts you want to be shadows or the dark parts. So when you fill it with black paint, it really just takes it to the next level. Well, now that it's dry, here's the final piece. I just wanted to show you a comparison between my dog and the engraving with the black painted inside the engraved parts. Um, it looks beautiful and it looks like my dog approves too. So acrylic mirror can be used for a ton of different things, not just what I showed you. Uh, you can cut out names and titles and letters. Uh, you can accent other pieces that you've put together and uh, really make your stuff sparkle and shine. It looks great paired with some dark engravings on different woods right here. We have walnuts. Um, you could also mix it uh, so that way you have multiple different colors to really make it pop. Um, and here's a good example of a piece I did using, I think, four or five different tones here. And it, it paired together really well. So now that I've shown you some examples of ways to use it, I hope that you know this helps inspire some projects of your own. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out in the comments down below. Thanks.